Hi, my question for you today is what happens when the job that you have doesn't quite fill you up anymore? What happens when you're just kind of feeling meh about things? This has personally happened to me and it's happened to a lot of my clients and I want to talk to you about it today because it might be something that you're experiencing and I want to talk you through it. This week on my blog, I wrote about Julie Hughes, who was a client, and she's given me permission to tell her story. She was a PT. She still is a doctor of PT, and there was something about PT that just wasn't filling her up anymore, and some of the work we did was to figure out what she really wanted. Good morning to whomever's out there. What she really wanted next. She had a very expensive, prestigious degree. She was a doctor of PT. And for some reason, it just wasn't filling her up anymore. Now, this happens to many clients. It's also happened to myself. I'll talk about my experience. I'll talk about Julie's experience. I'd love to hear about your experience, too. I was a high school teacher, and I had a very expensive master's degree and post-master's degree. And I spent a lot of money and time getting those degrees. I also spent a lot of time becoming the best teacher that I could possibly be. I loved teaching when I was a teacher. I loved my students, I loved my colleagues, I loved lesson planning, I loved curriculum building, I loved everything. But I got to the point where I would be in the shower in the morning. Have you guys ever done this where you're like in the shower and you're like, how can I get out of going to work today? How can I call in? Well, if I call in, I have to do sub plans and there's nothing worse for a teacher than having to do sub plans. But I realized that more days than not, I was asking myself how I could get out of going to that place and doing that job. Even the job that I loved, I had a lot of respect from my students, I had a lot of respect from my colleagues, but why did I want to stop going? And I started to just really check in. And I remember being in the shower, like washing my hair one day and going, this is like the third week in a row that I'm having this conversation with myself. And that's the point that I think a lot of my clients don't let themselves get to. They don't let themselves even notice when something feels a little meh, I don't want to do this anymore. So I spent a lot of time trying to figure out why I felt this way. Like, what didn't I like about teaching? I'm going to tell you, it took me years to figure it out. I stayed teaching high school, I don't know, like 14 years or something. And then I went to teach at the, sec the post-secondary level, uh, the community college. And the change was good, right? Like I, I went from one high school to another high school and that was good for a while. And then I went from high school to teaching community college and that helped for a while. But ultimately I was just like, there's something missing and there's something that's making me feel meh instead of yay. And so I'm wondering if that is something that maybe is bothering you because that's what my client Julie's experience was. She was a PT and she's so good at her job. If you met her, she, she knows stuff that like, I don't know, and, and she's really interested in, in her work. But it, she just felt like it wasn't, she wasn't serving the clients the way she wanted to. And ultimately, I kind of felt the same way. I wasn't serving my students the way I really felt like I should. I just couldn't do that anymore in the way that I wanted to. And so, so one of the things that I do with my clients is I help them understand, like, first of all, we have to become aware of that feeling when there's something a little off. Are you aware of that? Because sometimes we don't let ourselves become aware of that like disconnect because it's scary. And I wanna talk about that here. I wanna talk about why it took me years to understand that teaching was no longer the place I should have been spending my time. So here's why. I spent a lot of freaking money getting that goddamn master's degree. I didn't wanna like have to go back to graduate school again. I didn't want to go back to any kind of program again. I didn't, I wanted, like I was in my career. I wanted to keep going. And so the story I told myself was you can't do anything else because you're a teacher. That's it. That's all you are. That's all you'll ever be able to be. And I'll tell you that kept me stuck for a long time. I want you to know that teachers are incredibly motivated, talented, intelligent, educated, and their talents can be plugged in in other places, but nobody tells them that. And that's the case for almost everybody I talk to. You don't have to necessarily go back to graduate school if you wanna make a change in your life. So that's the first thing. 
Um, the second thing is, so you're scared that you have to give up the degree that you've already gotten or the training you've already gotten. But here's the other thing I really didn't want to do. I did not want to have to reestablish my my reputation. I when I in my first school that I taught in, it was a small school. Every student knew me. Even if they didn't have me, they knew me. <laughs> they were usually scared of me. But they knew me and they respected me and they, they didn't all like me, but they definitely knew who I was, what I taught, and and how I interacted with them. And I didn't want to have to rebuild that again. And so that took me a lot of sitting in it and saying, do I want to stay in this current unhappiness and heaviness? Or do I want to make the leap and do that and see if there's ease on the other side of that? Because I knew this wasn't going to change. This was just going to stay heavy and unhappy. And you might be bullshitting yourself into telling you, well, if I just stay and I do X, Y, or Z, then I will be happy. If I just could get rid of my boss, if I had a different manager, next year when I get a different class, if I could just uh, get a promotion, there's something you might be telling yourself to stay here in the heavy rather than make a leap that might also be hard but might serve you better. So that's something else to consider. When I actually did make the leap and went to another high school, it was very challenging and it ultimately wasn't a solution, but it was it propelled me forward and it taught me a lot. And so if you're staying stuck because the choice of moving or doing something different or making a shift feels too heavy and it feels too hard, then you're really doing yourself a disservice. I'm not saying this is easy at all. And this is exactly why people get support. This is exactly why people want community when they're making these choices. Um, So Sometimes you worry that you've paid too much or you've done too much work. Sometimes you're worried about what's coming next. I wrote these all down because I didn't want to forget today. Um, And if either of those problems is keeping you in your current meh situation, I want you to know you do not have to make any action or any choice. You don't have to sign up for graduate school. You don't have to like quit your job. But the first thing that you do have to do is admit to yourself that something's off. That is often the first place where I spend a lot of time with my private clients. It's hard to admit that we've been doing something over and over again that doesn't serve us. And if that's you, you don't need to judge yourself for it. You don't need to say, why am I still here? There's a reason you're still there. It serves you in some way. Remember, your brain just wants to keep you safe and efficient. And right now, you're probably safe and efficient because you know what to expect every single day and you can handle the discomfort. Hi, Loie. Good morning. If you are in a situation that's got you feeling meh and maybe more than meh, maybe it takes like maybe it's a Herculean effort to get through this situation every day. Maybe it's more than just a little uncomfortable. Maybe it's real pain for you then the, what I want you to do is, is just be and admit and listen and feel because you know. You maybe haven't admitted it yet, but you probably know that something's not right. For me, it was that moment in the shower every day where I was like doing the mental gymnastics of how can I get out of teaching ninth grade today? How can I get out of grading those essays today? And I just started to notice the patterns and the patterns were I hated grading. I hated dealing with parents who didn't support me. I hated being in front of students who I just, they didn't want to be there and they were on their phones. I just felt like the, the cell phone police all the time. I didn't want that anymore. And so I was like, how can I take what I already know how to do and what I've already been trained in and turn it into something else. And that's what I did. That's ex- so I took the experience I had as an inquiry-based teacher, the training that I got, that I got at the college to teach personal development and, and brain research, and then running a business and what that was like to do operations in a business. And I, I invented something else. Did people judge me? Yes. Do people think I'm not qualified? Yes. And what, I, I, I'm sitting here making money doing it. I'm making more money doing coaching than I ever did teaching. I'm happier and more fulfilled now than I ever was teaching. And to circle back why I started this whole thing was I was telling you about Julie Hughes, who was a PT. She still is a PT, just like I still am a teacher. I still have my degree. And Julie went through several iterations. We worked one-on-one to move through the deep stuff to get her there. 
but she now has a business as a pain recovery coach, helping men and women who are in constant pain to overcome their pain. That is what fills her up. She doesn't have to deal with insurance anymore. She doesn't have to deal with somebody else's practice. She has her own thing. Does running your own business have challenges? Of course, but they are my challenges that I choose. Those are Julie's challenges that she chooses. And when you do hard things like that, when you prove to yourself that you can get rid of the current discomfort and make a leap to, it's gonna be uncomfortable, but there's ease on the other side of that discomfort, I promise you, you will impress the hell out of yourself in a way you never have before. You will feel a satisfaction that you probably currently aren't feeling and you'll stop asking what's wrong, why aren't I enough, why can't I do this job, why isn't it making me happy? If you're asking yourselves those questions, I want you to know, first of all, you're not alone. Second of all, you don't have to go through it alone. There's tons of people out there who can help you. My group program is designed exactly for this. It's a very affordable coaching program to help people who have a, a meh feeling that want to get to the yeah feeling and how the heck do you do that well first you have to acknowledge and that's what i'm here today to talk about that's the very first step acknowledge become aware and then be nice to yourself about it it took me a long time and i hope that it doesn't take you the years that it took me to get through the discomfort first of all acknowledging it not judging myself for it, and then trying A and trying B and trying C and then trying D. And here I am on D right now. And someday I am sure that that's not going to serve me anymore and I'm gonna to have to move on to plan E. So I would love to know if this resonates with you, if what you're currently doing, like there's some itch, there's something you know you gotta scratch and you don't know how, you don't even know what it is, maybe you don't even have a name for it. My hope is that listening to me talk helps you put some words to your own itch. I don't know, maybe, that, maybe that's the metaphor that will work for you. But just know that having paid a lot of money for your degree, having a lot of respect in your current business or whatever story you're telling yourself, it isn't enough. It doesn't mean you need to quit your job. It, needs we need, we mean to take, it means we need to take baby steps to get there. Very first baby step is admitting it. So reach out to me if you have any questions. I'd love to know if this resonates with you at all. If you have any questions, of course, drop them below because I'm always happy to answer questions. And I hope this was helpful. Happy Monday. Let's go. Bye.